Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Old Man Ben, joined by Jill Bryan, and everyone hello, watching hello. us live on Twitch, talking about loud cars, iPods, yeah. <laughs> and Jill's undying love for the new Apple Vision. Oh, it is innovative. It's very cool. <laughs> I like uh, the term, the name Vision OS. Who turned out and, the lights, Joe? Yeah, who turned out the lights is absolutely That's all I true. thought when I saw that. And I saw the eyes through the visor and like, isn't that a great feature? And I'm like, yes, to scare the absolute snot out of people in the dark it is. Yeah. <laughs> I, immediately where my brain went. Immediately where yeah. my brain went. I've been playing around with a bunch of stuff this week. Wrapping up this, and this is our universal sign of um, I'm getting close to being done with the review for the IO Station 24 from Focusrite because I've taken it apart. That's always a good sign. Why? Because it means I've finished all of the recording that I need, just in case. Because you don't take it apart and try to put it back together. It's like, oh, well, that doesn't work. Hmm, I'm going to be a short video. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Get it back together. Everything works reasonably good on the repairability, but I'll have more about that in the video itself. And I'm getting everything ready for Debian 12. It's about to happen. Yeah, exciting. It's about to happen. I got all the boxes. I changed all the uh, sources list over to uh, Bookworm. Bookworm, I love the name. Good to go. <laughs> no complaints. You know, been running testing on everything because I always like to be a little bit ahead. Most everything in here is running testing. I still got one box running Debian 10. What reasons? That's why. And, um, yeah, after all that's done, hopefully I'll get the video out uh, for Interfacing Linux maybe later this week, early Monday. Then we can all gather around and watch the ongoing implosion of Reddit. Mm. <laughs> I don't think Reddit's long for this world. Do you, have yeah. you <laughs> been paying attention to what's happening with, um... If you use Reddit, I've been using Reddit. My Reddit account is, I think, 16 years old. I've been yeah. there since almost day one. On mobile, they're mobile. They didn't have a mobile app for a long time. Then they bought a company. And it's just real, real bad enough to where there's a really good ecosystem for third-party apps on Reddit. And I've been using Relay for Reddit for probably eight, seven, oh, eight yeah, years. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. And there's Reddit is fun and Reddit, Bacon Reddit or whatever. Bacon Reddit, yeah. <laughs> and, um, but they've changed the thing to where their API access Having issues. <laughs> they got to pay for it now. Uh, and, and it's like 20 times more expensive than anyone else's. Oh. When oh they've gone the way of Twitter. <laughs> Twitter is affordable compared to this. <laughs> oh, this, okay. this is brutal enough to where there's no other reason than they're doing it is to kill off third party apps. Oh, that's sad. To where no one. Like they would have, you would have to pay a monthly subscription in order for the app developers to even break even. Ah, uh, that's 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 horrible. Then, well, I guess then you'll just use the website and, <laughs> instead of Have you of been the to the website lately? <laughs> have you? I might be alone, but I use um old Reddit, old yeah, Reddit.com. I know you do. Yeah, that's the only way Reddit makes sense to me, and I use a thing called Reddit Enhancement Suite on top of that, which really lets me dial in Reddit for how I want it to work. Every time I go to Reddit, like I'll, if we do it during a show or something like this, I have to like have a panic attack and go, what is this? This is horrible. Ah, it's miserable. I have no idea like where I'm even at because new Reddit is uh, like dig 4.0, man. Yeah, I was going to say it's like dig. <laughs> yeah, I prefer old Reddit myself, but sometimes I use the new one for, for dig nostalgia. <laughs> I like... Uh, I like just flat text, you know, I, I spend my time, like recently I found my, you know, I spend my time on Reddit and I spend my time probably more on Hacker News and a couple of other places. Mm -hmm. But, hey, that's it. Also, I'm fishing around, might be getting a um, good deal on a Kona capture card to test out because, you know, last year, right, right at the end of last year, they added the uh, support, Kona came in and added support to OBS. So I thought it would be interesting because it's going to be an involved process of like setting up an SDK, compiling OBS. I just want to see if it works. And Kona, nice. 
They ain't mm-hmm. cheap. But we're at like one of those cycles where people are dumping loads of the last gen onto eBay. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Yeah, right? So I'm like, hmm, all right, maybe, maybe I'm going to grab one of these for like 100 bucks and we'll get a little video out of it, play around with it. How about you, Joe Bryant? Oh, well, besides <laughs> adding this to my mug collection, this, this yellow palm tree that Ven isn't too keen on. <laughs> I, you know what? I think it's lovely, and I have no complaints it's with cute. it whatsoever. I said, that just looks like something that's going to get knocked over. Yeah. You know, it's I, a, for audio listeners, it's a real thin, narrow basin to keep things extra balanced. It's got palm tree things to aid in, um, you know, yeah, falling over. messing up the <laughs> center of gravity, making it very top heavy and giving you extra stuff to hit. Yeah. At the top of it. And speaking of which, I, I moved it over because I'm going to show something else. <laughs> <laughs> so I got this <laughs> really cute penguin blanket. It was actually a belated birthday gift from Linux Chicks LA, Sharon. And I got it Sunday evening while me, Steve Husband, and the Linux Chicks had a nice dinner together. And it's just so cute. It's one of those blankets that keeps you warm on the couch. It's for your lap or to to put around your back it's a really small blanket but it's perfect for me and it's just so cute and it's just so warm and fuzzy (laughs) it does look like it's full of penguins yeah it sure is that's my penguin army (laughs) keep those penguins marching (laughs) oh man so what do we got to talk about this week everybody outside of our our, your obi-wan blankets Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> palm tree lightsaber. It could be one of those things. Well, Libra we have office. an office that's flat. <laughs> it's going to get flat packs. And everyone's Yay. excited about this. Mm-hmm. They're super happy about this. No complaints. The internet itself is joyous. LibreOffice mm-hmm. RPMs have been orphaned. That's right. That's right. Flatpak will be the recommended way to get install LibreOffice and RHEL and Fedora. Now, the interesting part to me is um, they said we're adjusting our engineering properties for uh, priorities, I should say, for RHEL workstations, focusing on gaps in Wayland, building out HDR support, and building out what's needed for color sensitive work, and a host of other refinements required by workstation users. Okay, that's neat. A focus on professional graphic features certainly makes sense for workstations. I have 100% support for that. And it turns out, turns out Red Hat has been a large contributor up now, up till very recently, and uh, Mm -hmm. about as big as uh, Collabora, Collabura, Collabora, (laughs) Collaborababo, Collaborababa. Yeah. (laughs) And um, just by judging by the commits then so you know i am you're reading through at fedora hyperkitty list.fedoraproject.org all these links are gonna be in the show notes people are like really we're, we're, we're doing flatbacks for labor office mm-hmm. and I, you know i listen I, I i'm sitting here going one of the first things i do when i debian install is remove libro office like why is that part of the base install um flatback still got some problems they do and let's not pretend they don't but, you know, things like global menu, high DPI, VCL theming, they don't work with the official flat pack on the latest KD and Whalen. The Libre Office. Like, those are not insignificant problems. Maybe they can be overcome. And this isn't, I don't think it's necessarily going to hurt anything. I think, like, the surprising thing to me was, you know, they, they have people in the graphics and engineering team maintaining these. And like, why are they having to do that in the first place? So what do you think it is, Jill? Is this big, bad IBM changing things for no reason, or is this just a big flat pack taking over our Linux ecosystem? Oh, no. Um, honestly, I think this is a great use of containerized software. They're, they're essentially using the flat pack apps you know, as a way to transition from X11 to Wayland. And it makes life easier for them because they don't have to do you know, all the maintenance on it while they're transitioning. So it kind of makes sense. Uh, it works pretty well as a flat pack. Uh, 
Yeah, and you know, like you were saying, Red Hat has been a large contributor up to now, so it it makes sense because Flatpak is their ecosystem. Mm, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to lose sleep about it one way or the other. I, I I tried to get upset about this, but I'm not. I'm not. Like, yeah. if you're going to be using Red Hat, if you're going to be using Fedora Flatpaks, part of your life. That's just part of the deal, right? Yeah. Isn't that kind of like using Ubuntu and saying, wait a minute, they're changing this to a snap? I'm like, of course they are. That's <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I'm using uh, SteamOS uh, a lot lately. In fact, I did some of my show notes on my Steam Deck. And um, it's, you know, got a flat pack repository that works very nice. It's a very good immutable system. And I've been quite impressed uh, with the development of flat packs and how how quick the apps are launching and and their overall uh, functionality. So I think it's a really good, it, it's it's a good way, a, a a great bridge for them, you know. Eventually, you know, creating one that's uh, you know, DNF or a local install. So, well, I understand them keeping with flat packs, but I mean, all the benefits of uh, flat packs and mutable systems. Those are neat, but I don't know. Yeah, no, I know. For for desktop, desktop? use, for home users. Yeah. After playing with Silver Blue, and I'm like, oh, I have to go through <laughs> all of this to install an application? Yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm good. But, um, you know, Flatpaks seem really good for developers and development mm -hmm. teams. Which always yeah, absolutely. Make... Easy to update, maintain. I and think it's always like the wrong cross. foot. To put yeah. out though, Joe, you know, because like, <laughs> what about the end users? <laughs> yeah. What, what about the end users? And the other argument of that is, but Vin, you're being silly. It's easier for developers, and it uh, it's going to simplify things. It's going to get the normal people to use Linux. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, have have you looked around the room? Normal people don't run Linux. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> normal people don't install all an operating system <laughs> this is true although the flat pack is actually kind of nice for say you have you know a relative that you want to give linux to and it's it's a, it's a nice way to do it have them set up with flat packs and then just search the flat hub and the flat pack store and install it that and then like they won't break them a anything chromebook with a bunch of extra steps and and that's that's what essentially, you know, a Chromebook is, an immutable read-only file system that uses containers. And that's what uh, it's, it's, you know, uh, the most popular way to use Linux is Chrome OS So you right think now. about this. Do you want to turn your desktop and laptop into a Chromebook? <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you sure? Because no. it sure sounds like it. <laughs> Well, you know, what's kind of nice is Fedora has a tool, it's called Toolbox, I believe, that you can install uh, DNFs <laughs> as well <laughs> within the uh, immutable system. <laughs> yeah, I think there's like a, um, we're, 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 at a we're at a bit <laughs> of a time right now with um, competition's good. People call it fragmentation, I call it choice. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, everyone's going to have their own thing because it's Linux. We're never going to boil down to like just one thing. It never happens for good and for bad. But, mm -hmm. you know, like LibreOffice, you're still going to be able to get, you know, Debian packages and whatnot. So, yeah, absolutely. Don't panic. And I think the engineering resources are going to be better spent on Wayland HDR support and other stuff that you would need for actual workstation use. Yeah. I, I just can't imagine there's a huge audience. Feel free to write into the show, leave a YouTube comment, because I'm sure I'm wrong because, you know, the exception always proves the rule. And you know this one thing, this one place that relies on LibreOffice. Mm -hmm. And that's why a uh, Red Hat should continue to make sure you can just use the flapping. It's not like, I mean, I, I don't even complain about, I wouldn't even be upset about the speed of flat packs with LibreOffice. Like, what was the last time? Like, LibreOffice is one of those programs you open once and you're, you, it just stays open the rest of the day, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a browser. If you got to have that to run in the background, it's not a big deal. So, everyone, calm 
down now. ASCII art. Yeah. Speaking of flat packs and flat hub, here is a, a fun ASCII art app available as a flat pack from the flat hub. And it's a new app, so they haven't made a deb of it or a DNF um, install. It looks so, so spooky. <laughs> yeah, it's really awesome. It's The name is Calligraphy. And this lets you easily turn your text into cool ASCII banners. Just type in a word or sentence like LWDW, or you can, <laughs> or if you're me, you need to say it correctly. <laughs> you need to say the name of our show correctly. Just type in a word or sentence like LWDW, select a style, and voila, you have an impressive ASCII art text that you can use online to impress your friends. Or me and Ven in our Discord chat. <laughs> I had fun with LWDW and going through um, all the art styles. Like there's graffiti, rounded, chunky, dot matrix style, cosmic, mini, pebbles, poison, and doom, of course. And the, it's it works so quickly. That That's another nice thing. And the awesome thing about this is that calligraphy is actually a GUI front end to PyFiglet, which is a pure Python implementation of Figlet. And Figlet is a command line tool used to generate ASCII text blocks, which I've been using for years. So, but it's it's really nice to have a, a GUI of this that just does it, you know, auto magically. <laughs> and you know, you can choose the art style without having to remember the command line arguments. Because there's a lot of art styles. There's probably looked like almost a hundred of them. Well, I so, mean, is it available for next step? Yes. A figlet has been around a long time. And I mean, <laughs> I did use it actually on MS-DOS and, and Amiga back in the day. <laughs> and um, Unix. <laughs> but it's it's been around. So this is a front end, a GUI front end for figlet. And it works beautifully. So then what do, you, what do you do after you've generated the ASCII text? You just cut and paste it <laughs> into whatever social network you want to put it oh, in. Oh, you like just Discord use it for gra or... graffiti. Yeah, <laughs> you could do that too. <laughs> oh, my yeah. favorite thing about ASCII art, my I don't, ASCII art is always entertaining, but my favorite thing is uh, diseased ASCII art. When somebody tries to do ASCII art or an ASCII image and the formatting is wrong. Oh, and yeah. it's all shifted incorrectly. That, and it's broken. And it looks all diseased. And those are usually hilarious because somebody's yeah. usually trying to post something inappropriate or naughty. And uh, they're, they're trying to be <laughs> edgy with it. And watching that fail just fills me with glee. And I'm like, oh, you tried, did you, you little edgelord? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of funny, Ben, because it really depends on the font that you're that's installed in the system or in the terminal. <laughs> You know, it's just... I mean, you see it uh, in like Steam reviews, you see it in Twitch chat, and uh, sometimes yeah. it works. Sometimes, yeah. it sometimes it works great, sometimes it doesn't. LWW was pretty successful. I tried it with about 50 different styles. You know, it... if it couldn't handle four letters, I would be disappointed. <laughs> yeah, this is true. <laughs> just a little bit of the, like, mm, I don't know, we might, we might need to revisit this. Pretty yeah. neat. Again, that's going to be in the show notes. Um, I play guitar every now and then. Yeah, you do, Ben. <laughs> it's, uh, if I had all my guitars out and um, somebody, I've, I've had this happen, they've walked in, I got a couple of amps, and I'm like, hey, do you play music? I'm like, no, mm -mm, never touched them. Then <laughs> they didn't know what to say because they realized that was a rhetorical thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, seven, eight guitars, a couple of amps, a bunch of pedals. Like, how oh, do you play? Like, ah, just collect it. <laughs> but. I try to play. I've been, past couple of years, I've been like, you know, I'm going to get back to play, playing on regular things. I, I used to just jam all the time. I did. Um, some plenty of bands growing up. All the fun things that you'd normally do as one does. And now, I even have a guitar in the studio in the um, right hand corner on a guitar stand to shame me into playing. Like it's, <laughs> looking at it right now, I've just ignored it. I have this ability because oh. when I picked it up, I had to dust it off. Oh yeah, <laughs> I had to dust it off because the been last time, yeah, it had <laughs> been probably six, seven months since last time I picked it up, and I keep it in here for the interfacing Linux. Thing. Yeah, your like, videos. 
Yeah. Like, okay. And <laughs> I get it and I plug it in, dust it off first because I pick it. I'm like, ew. I'm going to clean it off. Tune it, get things together. And this is a cruel thing because I end up putting like new strings on it every other time I play it because I go so long in between. But I'm thinking to myself, do I want to get an amp in here? Do I want to get my pedals in here mm. and get all that wired in to the interface? Like, you know what? Let, let's try this thing that I heard about a couple of months ago, and I never got a chance to play around with it. And you might be familiar with stuff like this because if you play guitar, you play bass on Linux. This is a question I get very regularly. What type of amp modelers are available? And usually I'm going to steer you right towards Guitar X. That's the one with the impulse cabs, there's a couple of different models. And well, not bad. Not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but nothing that it never quite hit the good enough for me. I'm like, eh, let me just go grab a, you know, a pedal and play around with it. Well, that's changed. This this is absolutely legit. I was playing around with this when I was uh, recording. And this is Nam, Neural Amp Modeler, and oh boy. This thing, this thing just wins. This thing just wins. I mean, it's free amp profiler. It's based on neural network emulator for guitar amps, and it's also available as an LV2. So what you can do is you can profile your own amps, your own stomp boxes, any other gear. Or here's the really cool part. Here's the really cool part. Then you can head over to Tone Hunt, where other people have done this with their cabinets and their distortion pedals and chorus pedals. And this is like Proton DB. Wow, look for at amp this. sims you can go through yeah. people have ratings on them it shows you the downloads you can do searches you can find your amps uh impulses stomp boxes anything that you can think of and i had a great time playing around with this like, this is me excusing how bad the guitar playing aside from not playing for like seven months and it's like sitting down here and I'm like i'm just going to play something real quick you know just to show you that we can get signal through the audio interface and um that led to me, I was probably in here for like an hour and 45 minutes just playing with this. Oh, that's like cool, Vin. Kid in a candy store just having all this, and it sounds yeah. good. It sounds oh, good. Great. I mean, it, it's not one to one, but it's close enough. Like you hear that and you're like, yeah, 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 I, I could make an album with that. <laughs> like that's got the right sound to it. And a um, couple of things, though. You need um, the LV2 is not going the LV2 plugin. It's not going to work out of the box with Reaper. You're going to have to use Reaper Nightly if you want to play around with that. But it should work out of the box without door. So if that's mm -hmm. what you're using, go ahead and plug that in. And the only thing I warn you against is uh, decision paralysis, because that kind of comes up really quick <laughs> when you have thousands and thousands of models to play around. You will spend hours and hours of tinkering, is which that's what I did. And you probably shouldn't spend a couple hours playing a guitar after you haven't touched one in a couple of months because you have no calluses on your finger. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you'll pay for that in the upcoming days. So I just wanted to give that a shout out. Neural Amp Modeler, if you do, you play guitar, cool. bass, or keyboard, and you're looking for something to feed that through, it's low latency. You can use it in real time. It, 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 it's just fun. It, it reminds me of like the first time I sat down with a um, like a meme machine where uh, somebody had loaded a couple of hundred different arcade games on it. It's like, I don't even know where to start. Yeah, overwhelming. Yeah, there's just so much to play with and on the musical side. And I don't have a ton of pedals. I've probably got like 20 or 30 90s era, 2000 era, some digital, some analog pedals. But like, not having to deal with that. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's that's really sweet. I don't I don't know about the you know guitar end of it, but uh, I do know a little bit about software synthesizers because I played around with a lot of the the hacks the community did with Zen Abs Subflux and created some music with that. And that was I spent hours doing that. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Pretty. Decent. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, go check it out. Neural Amp Modeler. And you awesome. can do it with like, if you, any signal you can, you can feed it through this. So if, if you play the digital beep bops to stuff, 
you can still run it through this. And oh yeah, I was. It, it'll probably work with the synth too, MIDI. Oh, it works with synth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You just put it that in the plugin chain. Put the plugin somewhere in the signal chain yeah. and come out. Cool. And uh, some are good, some are not. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Uh, it, it, it's like some people have done like really good models of their hardware. Some people haven't, and uh, then you got to play around with like gain input. It's a good weekend project if you've been looking for an excuse to plug your guitar in and like burn an afternoon. This will do it for you. This will do cool. it. Cool for you now if you want to burn some money you can head yeah. over to patreon.com forward slash <laughs> linux gamecast help us out and do what we do helping people linux since 2010 we got a bunch of little bonus things that we kick back if you can spare a buck a week a thousand dollars a week one hundred thousand dollars a week or about, about tree fitty access mm -hmm. to the live and uncut versions of these shows this is just the nice pulp free metal section you get the pre show, you get the post show, and you get the video version of all that early cracks at anything I'm working on behind the scenes. That interfacing Linux, that's going to be up. You're going to get access to that a couple of days beforehand. Just take a peek at it, make sure everything's all right. Be the final judge. Maybe I need to make some changes. You get to decide and be part of that process. Access to our super secret Discord where we're at the other six days of the week talking our nonsense. And I really wish I could give you a topic about what we talk about, but it just goes to many places. Yeah. <laughs> yeah especially since everyone's on the one feed and it just keeps, you know, there'll, there'll be like uh, three different conversations going on at the same time. It's really Gotta cool. Gotta have those conversations going on. And, <laughs> you know, I understand some people, because nothing makes me sadder than going into, because um, we normally keep uh, active for about 80 to 100 people in Discord. Yeah. And... I'll go into discords with uh, like two, 300 people. And what they have is like 60 rooms. Yeah. Uh, separate rooms. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody's talking. On it. <laughs> like just, you got to get the group together. Come hang out. Come hang out. We, we, we simplify it. We got general and we got live. So you can come mm -hmm. play with us. Uh, me and Jill do a thing on Tuesdays and um, Fridays. Yeah. Track mania. We did that last night. I think everybody had a good time playing around with yeah. that. Yeah. Biatko showed up. Yeah, that was great. Biatko showed up. I even did a little practice last night, Ven. You did? <laughs> yeah. Were we playing Mario Brothers? No, <laughs> Trackmania. Oh, okay. I just, I just practiced through like four maps that were giving me some trouble. So. Uh, yeah, a lot of people had a uh, surprisingly difficult time aiming their cars in a straight direction. Yeah, that was a, that's a hard, I still that, haven't gotten through that one. That was surprising. <laughs> I, I, this is, we, we start out with a fun little LOL map and you know, it, it's always like silly. Yeah. And all the maps are varying degrees of silly. Let's be honest. It's, <laughs> it, yeah, it's physics platforming with a car. And um, this one is just re basically just have to go in a straight line with some drops and deal with the physics uh, ramifications of that. Man, the excuses came out hard and fast. Yeah. <laughs> in the first five seconds, my controller's <laughs> dead spots. Oh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just had a hard time keeping the car straight. And so I've figured, oh, I'll just, I, try practicing with the keyboard and i'll do that <laughs> yeah I, I did it with the keyboard because i saw turbo was uh he's like oh try it with the keyboard and i'm like yeah it's not too bad but i, I can just do it with my old rickety mm -hmm. um bright red ps4 controller oh i thought yeah. it was still on i'm like well you've been on all night uh -oh. <laughs> um which doesn't cut off by itself sony i'm not excusing that <laughs> The Microsoft controller is smart enough to cut itself off after nine minutes. This thing will just happily run until the batteries run out. Yeah. Which is <laughs> weird. Um, speaking of stuff like that, we have Amazon wish list. If you want to pick up anything for Jill Bryant, she will wave it around mm -hmm. in front of a camera, hug it, and tell you yeah. that you're her new favorite person until the next yes. person gets something for her. I will <laughs> do the exact same, but I'll one-up that deal. I'll put your name back here on the wall, <laughs> but that's going to cost you. Um, all of that's going to be available at LinuxTeamCast.com under the support tab. We do appreciate anything you can kick our way. Just come hang out with us live. Come watch the show. Doesn't cost mm -hmm. a thing. Say hello now. Yeah. Time for Slice Spy. This led to a little bit in the pre-show of um, definitely showing our age. <laughs> but also it reminded me of um, Max Headroom, Joe. Yeah, it sure did. So... You used to need a lot of equipment to 
be a video DJ and create live effects in time with hypnotic beats. But now you actually can do all that with a Raspberry Pi Zero and a device called the Recur Boy. The Recur Boy is an awesome Raspberry Pi Zero video instrument and a modern video synth with all the bells and whistles, and it's small enough to fit in your pocket. And this, this is created by Cyberboy666. So with the Recur Boy, you can trigger clips and run shaders to create and manipulate SD video. <laughs> you can have fun mangling video using old school analog psychedelic effects combined with digital effects with its knobs and potentiometers. And it has four modes, video, shader, effects, and external input. I mean, th this DJ, this developer thought of everything. The video mode plays video straight off of the SD card through the Recur Boys composite video out. Shader mode lets you program your own shaders using the GLES shader. Effects mode overlays your shaders on the video that's playing. And the external mode allows you to plug in a USB video capture card or a webcam. And that's really cool. That's where the Max Headroom part comes in. <laughs> you, can either, you can load uh, the classic uh, Max Headroom uh, <laughs> animation from a... Uh, um, uh, onboard card or or externally <laughs> from a VHS that really tape. got me thinking about it, man. I'm like, uh, where's the Max Headroom VTuber? Yeah, yes, the VTubers. <laughs> I, I want to be a belligerent Pepsi spokesman. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, we can do blipverts with this device. <laughs> right, I can make people explode from the comfort yes. of my own home. <laughs> so true. Mac, 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 Max Headroom. <laughs> and it's really cool also because you can plug in a MIDI controller and control it all externally. And it's just, it's a great device for, for doing live DJ sets. And that's, you know, being able to, to, to do stuff like this live and manipulate video live is really incredible because it takes hundreds of hours to make animation for music videos <laughs> and i know that because i've done a lot of that and it's it's nice to have a live option where you can just spontaneous create really cool video your you hundreds know, of hours of work can be replaced by a guy twiddling a knob knob yeah <laughs> in some cases yes in many other cases no <laughs> but uh um it's the recur boy uses full, fully open source hardware and can be purchased as a kit to build yourself for 90 pounds or pre-assembled for only a 30, 135 pounds. Although currently when I checked yesterday, it was out of stock. And I think mm. it's because it's been getting a lot of press <laughs> and out there and people have been buying them. So I'm, I'm sure we'll see more in stock soon. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and um, the developer said the Raspberry Pi Zero is not included due to supply shortages, so you will need to buy one separately when you can find one. And it's easily, easily plugged in the back of the unit to get started. So mm. I was just really impressed with all the thought that went into this, and he, he thought of every circumstance that a DJ would need, you know, to do live performance. And it's it's inexpensive it doesn't cost thousands of dollars to have an a, a effects box <laughs> or a mixer so. no, i mean it, it's definitely got a nice little retro vintage thing going on with it yeah and flexibility something you can build at home for yourself and it's a lot lot safer a lot more responsible responsible than like spiking the punch at the party just to get yeah. the fx psychedelic <laughs> colors for everyone so <laughs> maybe that's something you want to check out all right Joe, yeah. we're running a little <laughs> bit long we gotta okay. run I know. Okay. I know. <laughs> so let's bring the music up. Speaking Yay! of like oonsy wooshy music. Our little bouncy happy music that, yeah. that still hasn't changed, even though I like it. <laughs> he said he was going to change it because I like it. <laughs> really Thanks for fun. reminding me. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a, a great music for the Recur Boy <laughs> to do some video synth with. <laughs> 
Thank you, Arthur and our advisors and Omegas and our executive producers, Barbara and Scott. Uh, the, the credits are going by too quickly. I can't read them all. <laughs> we got bloody we people, have... all of our sea monsters, death notes, all the stages that you can yeah. achieve and unlock and get On achievements our Patreon. for. Lots <laughs> of turtlings are really small. <laughs> all right. Episode 378. Yay. We're going to wind it up. It it disappears. Boop. <laughs> 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 anyway. All right, beautiful people. See you next week. Bye, everyone. Love you all. <laughs>